morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Thank you guys for coming. We know that our Savior birth as commercialized. They wanted to make it. It wasn't yesterday, but we know what we're celebrating Jesus. So just to have the experience with him and to walk with him and to know him personally. And I think this year God's going to go more so now than each and every individual's life. It's going to move in a way so, so profound that it's going to draw attention to the kingdom. Not towards them, but towards the kingdom and put them in position. So our last year's, really last year was a hard task because we were distracted to walk where we were walking. And all so many things came so hard. So screeching and attacked at every level of family, friends, loved ones, everything has been thrown at us. But because the kingdom is progressing and growing, and God wants to mature and walk in those things, the enemy wants us to distract us from doing those things. So my attention was on the kingdom and not focusing on what the God of the Father was releasing, then he would have to. I think the Lord is really just find that home before his kingdom, a greater thirst to walk with him and to know him in a more intimate way. And as we seek him, we find more of him. And he draws closer to him. So Lord, this morning as your sons and daughters, we thank you for the opportunity to come. To come before you, to worship Jesus, the risen Messiah. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come and to glorify your name and to rejoice in you. Shout out to the Lord, the voice of triumph, to sing to you a new song. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, Lord. I'm just excited, Lord, for the things you're about to do this coming year, as well as finishing out this year we have. That you're faithful to your word, that you watch over your word, you perform, that your kingdom is unshakable, unmovable, always abiding, and strong and strengthened. To show us the way, who we are in this kingdom, how we operate out of this kingdom, and that you are king of this kingdom, Lord. By your spirit, we move by direction. And you go before us and make the crooked road straight. And you prepare us and take us before us in the presence of our enemies. You are not by him before us. Our cup running over because of you, Lord. We thank you. And we empty, Lord, fill us up until our cup runs over. No more empty cups, Lord, I pray. And we get into Lord with the worship, Lord. No more empty cups, Lord. No more empty cups. Because you are the refiner. You are the one who fills us up. And you are eternal. So every empty vessel this morning, Lord, fill up, Father. Let they come and run up over. Let the overflow come. Now to him was able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above, but by acts of faith, according to the power of him that lives within me. Do so, Father. Do so, Lord to the abundance, to the fullness of, but the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit that's inside of us. Fill us with capacity, Lord. Let our cup overflow, Jesus. Let it overflow, Lord. Let it overflow, Lord. For you would not turn us away from you. For you sent your word, let the children come, for such is the kingdom of God. So we come as children, Lord, for such is the kingdom, to be filled empowered, endowed, moved upon, strengthened, full of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and power from your spirit that's in us. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your faithfulness. And we worship you, Jesus. In your righteous name we pray. Amen.
And, and there's no telling who the Lord might use in here, you know, whoever's face he decides to use. But we, we get to leave feeling encouraged because the word is for encouragement and for edifying. And so we get to leave differently than we come in. And it's just so awesome to be plugged in that we don't we don't have to go to groups in a basement somewhere for seven steps of self-help. And, and, and we don't have to keep getting up week after week and say, hey, my name's Richard. Hey, hi, Richard. And... You know, but we can actually come into it just be be who we are. And it's just I, I don't I don't know I know I take it for granted a lot of times. I'm not saying y'all do, I don't know if y'all do or not, but I take it for granted, man. We really we really have a, a cool thing or the Lord has really allowed us to be plugged in to a cool thing. And I mean I, I know I know we're not going to a big mega thing and I know we don't have people outside assisting our partner or anything like that. We don't have all these different programs going on, but at the same time there is still yet a word from the Lord. Amen. And that's such an important thing. And it's not generic, and it's not uh, just to make you feel this way or that way, you know, to, uh, we, we, we don't, we, we don't, we're not led this way because ties need to be, bring, uh, be brought up this week. We're not, then, then we're not led another way because attendance needs to be brought in. And we're not led this way because I found out uh, that, 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 that Cousin Nunu don't went and got on, on to something, you know, so I need to find a verse in the Bible that preaches to them because God knows each and every one of our situations at all times. And I don't know if it's just been me, but there hasn't been many times where whoever stood in the pulpit didn't bring exactly, unbeknown to them, the word that I needed to hear for that time in my life. Am I the only one or, or, or has any of y'all ever got that? Because of God's faithfulness to us. That's why. Not because of the man or the woman of God or whoever got up to speak, pray, uh, sing, or preach, or anything like that. But it's because of God's faithfulness to us. And I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something a little different. I know I, I, it seems, and I never mean for it to do like this, but it seems like from the time we begin to the time we sit down, it's usually an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. And I don't know how it works out like that, but it always works out like that. But I want to do something a little different. I have one song. Hi, girls. I don't know if Samantha has a song or not. She may have a song. But I want to do something just a little different. I, I know, and and don't be mad at me. I love you. But I, I know one person in here I would like to get prayed for. All right? But if there's anybody else, like I said, I'm just going to do this one song, and I'll play it, play it when I need to. And if Sam's got a song. All right? And then I want to take the rest of that time and and just give you, and I'm not trying to over-preach, Patrick, I feel led to do this this morning. I'm going to give you just a little mini something. So instead of the songs of encouragement, I'm going to give you a little nugget that the Lord gave me for encouragement. And then turn it over to the man of God. Is that okay? All right, so we're going to sing this one song. Well, I'm going to sing this one song. We're not singing with you, you know. And at that time, I would like for my Hannah to get prayed for, it, if that's okay. And anybody who feels that, has, that, has Hannah ever touched your heart? Has the Lord through hand ever done anything for your spirit? Has, has the Lord through hand ever encouraged you? If he has, I would ask you to get up and surround my sister this morning. And just let your faith lock with her faith this morning. Because I'm going to tell you, she's been going through the fire, y'all. But her knees ain't bent. She ain't giving up. She ain't giving in. She ain't letting go. She ain't letting off the hammer. She's still doing it. Her daddy gets killed in a car wreck. She's right here a couple days later singing glory to the Lord. Her mom's acting crazy. She's right here week after week still singing glory to the Lord. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was praise that brought my liberty. Thank you. 
Somebody that's tore up on the inside, he's too here to be there and he's too there to be here. Stephanie was asking about one of our kids the other day, and I said, Well, they too big to be little, they too little to be big. Maybe they're in that hung place. You don't remember? And I think sometimes we get in that hung place, right? But the Lord not only seeks to free us, but he seeks to mature us. And I want to break every lie over your life right now and tell you that God took Moses who was jacked up, all right? He was Hebrew, but raised by Egyptian. And then whenever he got up big enough, he killed somebody. And then he didn't kill somebody in, in honor to, to save the queen or anything. He killed somebody because what he seen happening on the outside was the same turmoil that he had happening on his inside. He saw a Hebrew and an Egyptian fighting. And that's the same thing that's going on on his inside. He saw a Hebrew and an Egyptian fighting, right? And so God comes to him when he's on the run, taking care of somebody else's stuff on the backside of a desert somewhere. And he's about 40 years old. Let me tell you, I don't care how old you are. The Lord ain't give up on you. He's still got a plan for your life. I don't care where you are or how old you are. All right. So listen, the Lord speaks to him through a burning bush. We all know the story. And he said, Moses, Moses, put off your shoes. For the, the ground that you were standing on is holy. And if you ever notice, this is the one time because I was kind of rushed into it this morning a little bit because I was running late, didn't want to get out of bed. Because Stephanie had me a weighted blanket that I was under. Ain't it funny how the older you get, you got to start getting accommodations so you can sleep. Ain't that stupid? But anyway, I was underneath this 18 hour blanket and I couldn't get up. <laughs> 
But if you notice, whenever we're doing praise and worship, we always got our shoes off. Because we feel like the place that we are standing on is holy. The Lord said, Moses, Moses, put your shoes off from your boy. You're standing on holy ground. And then the Lord asked Moses a question. You don't think the Lord knew what was in Moses' hand? The Lord said, Moses, what you got in your hand, boy? I'm, I'm totally paraphrasing. Moses said, stand. He said, throw it down on the ground. Moses threw it down on the ground, turned into a serpent. Moses got scared. The Lord said, pick it up by the tail. Moses picked it up by the tail, turned into a staff again. He was proving himself to Moses. He said, boy, I'm bigger than anything you ever seen. HBO ain't got nothing on me, old boy. Huh? David Copperfield ain't got nothing on me. He said, now, I want you to go back to that place that you've been running from. Woo! I didn't even have that. That just come out of my mouth. I want you to go back to that place that you've been running from. And I want you to tell them I've seen. Let my people go. I want you to go back to that place you've been running from. Tell them, let you go. He said, who am I going to say sin? A burnt bush? He said, you say I am. I am that I am. And then here come the excuses. So you know I'm slow to speak. You got a brother today. Take him with you. Now, go on. Go on, do what I said. And then it said something so peculiar to me. It said that the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. What sense in the blue hill does that make to harden the heart of a person you sent your man to to go communicate with and work a deal on letting your people go because you've heard the cries of them? And they had to be there so the prophecy could be fulfilled. But now it's time for that chapter. It's time for that season. Oh, it's about time for some seasons to be over in your life, y'all. It is time for some seasons to be over in your life. Might not be the two of y'all, but it's time for some seasons to be over in your life. It's time for you to quit believing the way you've been believing. It's time for some seasons to be done with. The Lord's ready to do away with some stuff. You've been there long enough. Well, why am I here, Lord? We're getting that. The Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and then sent Moses. And he told Moses, and I'm just going to get through it real quick. I'm not going to try to line by line because 12 chapters were. But the Lord told Moses what to tell Pharaoh. He said, I want you to go tell him. If you don't let my people go, I'm going to overrun the place with frogs. So Moses went and told him. Pharaoh said, well, I ain't going to do it. He said, I want you to let my people go so we can go up into the wilderness and, and, and make, a, make a burnt offering and worship our Lord. He said, well, if they got time to do that, then they got time to go get their own straw. So tell them to go get their own straw to make bricks with. So immediately, check that out, the Pharaoh started trying to take up any free time they had. The enemy in your life will try to take up all your free time to keep you from reading the Word. To keep you from praying. To keep you from fasting. To keep you from visiting that someone that really needs the words for what? Encouragement and edifying. To keep you from going to that person that needs to be encouraged and edified in the Lord. We don't got to go hit nobody in the mouth. You are thinking, sinner? Statistics prove that most people that, that have outrage and anger problems and stuff like that deep down are heartbroken about something. So instead of seeing that mean woman and that mean man sitting there being all volatile and stuff, if you could just see a little two-year-old baby that just dropped their sucker in the dirt. That's what they really are. And they need to hear, hey, Jesus still loves you. He can clean that sucker for you. Jesus still loves you. I still love you. We still love you. Won't you come on be with us? How about some one-on-one? -on -one? Come on over to the house. Let's, let's see the biscuit. Let's break the bread of life. That's what we try to do at my house. We don't always succeed, but we really try hard. So, Moses is sent to Pharaoh with a hardened heart, and he's giving the instructions God has given him, right? And he tells him, he's like, hey, if you don't let him go, frogs is coming. And then the magicians did the same thing. They made frogs come. 
And he's like, all right, well, if you don't let them go, then everything in the sea is going to die. And everything's going to be stinky and the water's going to be stagnant. And all the fish are going to die. And then the magicians did the same things. And I, I, I never heard this when I read this. And so I'm looking, and everything that Moses did, the magicians did, right? But when God said, if you don't let my people go, I'm going to turn all the sands of the desert into lice. And there's going to be lice on every animal and on every person. Guess what? The magicians couldn't do that because the devil is smoking screens. He's magic tricks. All right? He could influence, and a lot of us have, have lived a bigger part of our lives under influence. He could influence animals. You know that you can influence animals by different uh, radioactive waves like microwaves? By uh, hertz, like 2.5, 3.5. You know there's hertz for uh, for cancer. There's hertz for depression. Did you know that? I mean, it's crazy. I ain't going to get into all that. But anyway, so whenever it comes time, Moses said, if you don't let them go, the Lord's going to take all the, all the little sand and all the dead to turn into lice. And the magicians couldn't do that. It just jumped out at me. Why? Because only God can create. Only God. Lies. Only God can take things in your life. Only God can take bad things and make them good. Huh? Whose report are you believing today? Only God can create. And then here's another right here, y'all. I said all that to say this. Why was Pharaoh's heart hardened? The Lord told Moses that he was going to harden Pharaoh's heart so that the Israelites How else would they follow a God they couldn't trust? All the stuff that you've been through, all the things that you've had to endure in that last, all the things that you've had to see is so that you would believe in God. A lot of the things that we look at are not attacks over our life, but are things that God has allowed for us to spectate so that we will believe He is God. Why? So at the other end, we could just say, God, you're faithful. Why? Because I've seen you be faithful. God, you're a promise keeper. Why? Because I've seen you keep your promises. God, you're a way maker. Why? Because I've seen you make ways when there weren't any other ways. All the stuff that you've seen and been a part of and endured is so that you can believe that God is who he is and that his love towards you never fails and never wimbles and never flavors. It's always on full and it's always for you. I don't care what anybody else says. So I want you to be encouraged today. Do you believe that God really loves you? Do you believe that God really loves you? Could you imagine whenever God part of the Red Sea? Whenever you're sitting there reading, it said a strong, and I might get this back, but I believe it was an east wind. It said a strong east wind blew all night long part of the sea. So all night long this wind was blowing, and you got all these people, millions of people, that are sitting there enjoying this storm. Can I tell you that a lot of times what seems like a storm in your life is the Lord part of the sea.